knew that twist was not in the comics. Re. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd B-Sides edition. I'm your host, Zach Snyder. And on the B-Sides, take a look at anything and everything in the same format as your everyday nerd. They're just shorter, unsponsored episodes. In-game just released. And before I can process everything that movie does, we have to go back and finish and start phase two of the MCU because we've only done phase one. And I, I gotta tell you, when it comes to phase two, there's some good. There's some, uh, we'll talk about Thor The Dark World at some point. And then there's just some okay stuff. And as far as Iron Man 3 goes, I didn't see this movie until a few years ago. I recently rewatched it, and, and I, you know what? I don't think I'd agree with the general consensus when people say this movie is bad. In fact, I, I kind of like it. I'm Tony Stark. I build neat stuff. I got a great girl and occasionally save the world. For those of you that don't know anything about it, 2013's Iron Man 3 is the seventh film in the MCU and was directed by Shane Black. This is the only film that he directs in the entire franchise. This film directly follows the events of the Avengers where we see Tony Stark dealing with the ramifications of literally almost dying. After an old fan of Stark's, Aldrich Killian, shows up in present day to demonstrate some kind of new technology to Pepper Potts, a lot of bad shit goes down, including a string of strange bombings. This all happens to be connected to the terrorist organization, the Ten Rings, and the Mandarin, a popular Iron Man villain in the comics. While the main plot of the film deals with Killian and the Mandarin, the core of this film is really about Tony's struggle with PTSD because again, he literally almost died in the Avengers. It's one reason I think that the writing is so strong in most of these MCU films. Because instead of just being a strong superhero character that's brave, we get to see how these issues directly affect the humans that are underneath these suits. Overall, I ended up liking Iron Man 3 quite a lot. The strengths in the Iron Man films have always been Robert Downey Jr. and the comedy that derives from his character. In fact, after watching all these movies again, the Iron Man movies have some of the best overall comedy. This is especially true when it comes to his interactions with Hartley, this kid that he finds earlier on in the film. This relationship shows a bit of what Tony Stark would look like as a parent, which is great, especially in the context of the entire MCU, especially with a couple of later films. Iron Man 3's entire purpose is bringing the focus onto Tony's character, taking him away from the suit, and showing us who he is, even more so than any of the other films have shown him to be. But while this aspect is absolutely great, I still have some big issues with Iron Man 3. For starters, Killian and the Mandarin. Killian is another villain that I just don't care about. Unfortunately, 90% of the MCU villains are at best boring and at worst awful. Killian lies somewhere right in the middle. He could definitely be a lot worse, but most of his scenes, he's just boring. As far as the Mandarin goes, I can't really talk about him too much without spoilers. So here we go. For most of the film, we see the Mandarin as this intimidating guy who's clearly a terrorist. But then we find out that, oh, wait, He's actually just an actor playing the Mandarin as a character. And the real Mandarin is really just Killian and his goons. A lot of people didn't like this. Apparently it underweighs the, the comics and blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't care. I actually like this part of the villain. I think it was handled quite well. I think the actor playing the actor playing the Mandarin is funny and <laughs> has a little bit of charm to it. And he's a lot better than Killian by far. I'm definitely under the camp of as long as the adaptation is fun and entertaining, it doesn't matter how different it is from the source material. Either way, I like the concept here and I like the execution even better. I just don't care for Killian at all. And, and this is where my biggest issues with Iron Man 3 is. It's where I start to feel mixed. Everything with Killian has its ups and downs for me. There's the people that can explode that are just lame. I didn't care about them. Then there's Pepper who ends up getting the, the fire stuff inside of her. And that actually ends up pretty dope. We also get some really dumb shit from the president of the United States. But then we also get a really dope scene with Tony in stealth mode and other scenes with just Tony outside of the Iron Man suit, which I personally love. Again, this is another criticism that people have where it's like, this is Iron Man 3, but there's not enough Iron Man. And I'm like, I Tony Stark is Iron Man. He says it from the very beginning. He doesn't need the suit to be Iron Man. And I think that's really dope. 
We also get other great scenes because of what Killian is doing, but I think this just comes down to it being a superhero film. I love where Tony is saving people out of like a falling airplane. That scene's great. We also get another iconic scene where there's 20 something iron suits just like coming out of nowhere and just self-destructing. And it, it really, it's really cool. It shows that Tony is gonna try to stop being Iron Man in the future, which of course he doesn't <laughs> until he stops again. Then he doesn't, and it's just kind of this cycle because he's addicted to being a superhero. Either way, this is a nice gesture to the end of his trilogy. But that's really how I see this entire film. It is a nice wrap up to Iron Man's story without being the complete end of it. In many ways, this is where the real character arc of Tony Stark starts. As far as Iron Man 3 goes, it's a very solid, enjoyable film. I honestly don't have very many reasons to dislike it because of the character interactions and how strong they are it makes it one of the better films in the franchise. If you haven't seen Iron Man 3, I definitely suggest checking it out. If you're re-watching the MCU for Endgame, I don't think you necessarily have to watch it, but you still could watch it because it's a fun movie. Personally, I'll be looking to re-watching this film again in the future when I do another rewatch of the MCU. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for reason you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on Iron Man 3 are and what other films you're excited for me to talk about. We are gonna, we're, we're trying. We're trying to get these movies done so that I can talk about Endgame. And uh, I, I'm telling you, Endgame's worth it. I'll, I'll just say it straight up. Endgame is worth it, but we'll get to that soon. Anyway, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more episodes of Your Everyday Nerd and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.